N, O, no, look for it, R, all the way across, U, N, and again, N, and I, and... Being a non-speaker can be a lonely and frustrating world. All the way across, look for the last letter, G, good boy, running. I'd often find it difficult communicating my basic needs. People would constantly underestimate me, even those closest to me. But a day came when I found my voice, in the shape of a rectangular board with letters on. I finally had a chance to express myself and show the world who I really am. Now, it's my turn to be heard. I'm George Bond, and I'm a speller. Would you like to try some rhubarb flapjack? So this flapjack contains rhubarb grown from the garden. And I love to bake. It's my chilling thing. I have to be doing, even if I'm relaxing uh. and baking. And this is one of my signature dishes, rhubarb flapjack. So it used to be a way of getting rhubarb down my children without them noticing. The whole story starts with this book. So a dear friend of mine, I was literally, I went to stay with her for a few days. And as I was leaving, she said, Emma, Emma, I think I just read this book about George. We're like, what are you talking about? She, and she literally just, I was literally had hands full of stuff going back out to the car. And she said, well, look, take this book, take this book. And she said, you've got to read it. I think it's about George. Well, I read it in about four hours and realized it was exactly about George. And I was like, oh my gosh, when I read it, I thought I need to get on a plane to America. I need to find this, I need to find these people. And this is, I need to talk to these people and George needs to see these people. It's um, a practice which starts with as simple as alphabet boards, um, usually about eight letters. And it teaches children to spell simple words um, and communicate in ways that they've never been able to communicate before. Um, that is then developed when their fine motor skills um, get better and they are finally able to start typing and to start to communicate properly. Um, and I first experienced this in a nursery um, and I've seen it all the way up to secondary education. Uh, and I truly believe more people need to know about it because it is incredible. What would be the title of your watershed moment book? Ready? S O S O M S O M First ever session that she um, she was with George. She came on screen on, on Zoom. She went, hi George, good to meet you. Right, I'm going to read you a paragraph. I'm going to spell some of the long words and I'd like that I'm going to ask you some questions and I'd like you to spell the answers to me using the board. Um, and your mum's explained how you're going to do that. And I'm like, whoa. MN doesn't make sense, so look for your letter. U, S O M U, S O M U, yep, 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 go, go, go. So straight away, the thing that struck me the most, and it's the most important thing, now I know this, and I can remember it striking me then, is she straight away came on that screen and presumed confidence. What? C? Okay. Right in and out. Where's your eyes? C, I is weird. H? Okay. Go right to it. T? Good. In and out. O? In and out. S, good, 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 get to it. S, G is weird. A, S, A, find it, put your eyes on it, put your eyes on the board, your eyes on the board, your eyes are on the board. Y. Oh. 
Uh, his watershed, the title of his watershed book is so much to uh, say. Yeah, you do have so much to say, my love bug. Oh my gosh, that's not <laughs> So good. So now I know he has an understanding of everything I'm talking about. I talk to him exactly the same way. So as a result, our relationship has blossomed. Will you say that, George? Yeah. Blossomed. Um, you're good company. Is mummy good company? Or do you start, and sometimes you think, oh, we should shut up. I bet you, do I talk too much now? <laughs> do I talk too much to you? Yeah, I thought you'd say that. How did it go? It's great. Yay! Hey, Farmer George! George, if we don't get planning permission for your extension, this is this is the this is great. And it sounds like a cliche, but it it it, it was a miracle. It was I think it was the opening that we always wanted. It was the voice we wanted to hear. Um, and that and and there it was. Yeah, it was incredibly emotional. Yeah. Church. I love like, that shot. So do I. <laughs> and they're so good to you. Now, it's aren't the Tardis he needs to do it. Pound. He's sixteen, and this is the first time that we've heard, or we've heard him speak. Um, it's the first time we've realised, as well, that he has all that ability to communicate at this level as a sixteen-year-old. Um, that is that is a hard thing to get your head around. Um, and yeah, we were riddled with guilt. And there are other examples. And I look, keep looking back at different things that have happened where I have underestimated him. Like in the bookshop. Like in the bookshop. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to a bookshop. I went to a bookshop and he came up to the counter with Harry Potter. And I said, George, put that book back. You can't read it. And I, I just thought he picked it up because he'd seen one of his sisters read it and he wanted to read it. He wanted to own the book or have the book because his sisters had it. and Or he perhaps wanted one of us to read it to him. And I said, put the book back, George. We've come to buy a book for you today. Go and put that back and go and find something that, that you can enjoy. You can read on, on your own. And he put the book back and... Um, I helped him pick a book and it was a picture book um, which was far from age appropriate but it was fun and it was colourful and it had two or three words per page which I knew that possibly he could understand or he could follow um, but I totally not for one minute did I think my son would be able to read Harry Potter and we have since discovered working with S2C and growing kids the, the very good chance that George has been able to read since about four or five years old and he taught himself to read um, through watching telly and subtitles. He, he's taught himself to read. <laughs> it came back! Um, and he's so hungry for information, that's the other gorgeous thing. Because he realises he's got years to make up for as well, I guess very hungry um so yeah that's where we're at Woo! what a beautiful message George. Uh, oh. all right i am a need communication everyone does i am non-speaking and call to action everyone to stop making assumptions uh, about my intelligence dude <laughs> You are a star! <laughs> oh. Now that I've finally been heard, I want to make a difference. I want to use my skills for good in life. I have many plans for the future, including a current project at the Cognitive and Brain Science Department at Cambridge University, looking at the brain activity of a speller like me. I get to wear this funny hat. I want to become a fluent speller and advocate to other non-speakers this method of communication. 
along with Travel the World and start a travel blog and guide service for disabled and neurodivergent individuals wanting to travel and explore. And I will continue to be the fun, cheeky chap I am. I want all my fellow non-speakers listening to have hope that they will be heard. And I send this message to all. Never underestimate anyone.